The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Dominion Church of God. Stay tuned for today's message. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm happy that I'm in the house of the Lord. Are you? I'm happy that this day I'm alive to worship God. I'm alive to glorify him. And we just want to give a praise to God and thank you for joining us at Kingdom Dominion Church of God, where the, where the Holy Spirit dwells, a place without walls. So just relax and enjoy the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to say that, uh, that my birthday is coming up December 3rd. And you, might, you might wonder... Yes, I'm excited about that. And like everyone, everyone can say they're excited that when they get a gift, 
to get those gifts on uh, their birthday, on Christmas Day. They're excited about the gift. And when, and when the person who is given the gift becomes uh, excited, then it satisfies the giver. And then those around seeing, oh, what a wonderful gift, become excited about that gift too. And likewise, likewise, God has given each and every one of us a special gift, a special treasure that is deep within us. He, yes, you, he has given you that treasure, that gift, but it has become covered with so many stuff, that special gifts. Our body are the, are the, are, is a place where the Holy Spirit dwells, a place, a temporary housing place for the treasure God has given us. Let's look at 2 Peter 1. Of uh, sorry, Second Corinthians four verse seven, it says, "But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. He has granted us His divine power to us that that in all things." We, are, we can become conquerors. He has placed within us his power, his power that we can tell the world about him, that we can be bold. Not only that, he has placed certain gifts within us, the gifts of healing, the gifts of uh, exhortation, the gifts of tongue, the gifts of prophecy, interpretation, and he has also placed within us talents. There's so much that God has placed within us because he sees us as his child. However, that gift, that talent that he has placed within us, it has become covered by so much stuff, covered by fear, covered by, by doubt, buried in negative words that have been spoken over you. You begin to believe the lies of the devil. And it has become so wrapped up in all that stuff. And God wants you to tear off the covers because the gifts that is in within that is within you, he wants it to shine. He wants to, it, he wants you to illuminate the world with his precious gift that he has placed within you. So, like a soul, you look and, and you're like this, covered in so much doubt, a negative word, and and uh, and the spirit of uh, all sort of spirit that covered you and the gift cannot, cannot um, shine within you. And God says he wants to tear that off. Tear that off you. And sometime in tearing off that gift, that, uh, that cover that is, uh, that is on you, mm, that might not be easy. So you said, unwrap, let me minister to you. Let me speak to you. Won't you listen to me? I love you. He wants you to believe him. Believe that you are a child of God. Believe that all things are possible. Believe that greater, greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. So take off that covering. Take it off. And throw it away. It's only the plan of the devil to stop you from exercising your gift. Stop you from showing the world. And you think that, okay, okay, yes, I've gotten rid of that. But there is still more. And you hold on. You say, no, I, I, I can't. I can't. You doubt yourself. You cannot, you hold back yourself, you hold it back and will not allow the Holy Spirit to be releasing you. I got to cut it away. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in and he begins to cut. And sometimes it is not easy because sometimes when he's cutting, 
is right in the present and the eyes of where people are seeing you being cut. People are seeing you being torn and you're crying out inside because of pain. But God wants to, God wants to prune away everything that is not of him. Everything that holds you back, every besetting sin, every hidden secret that displeases him. God said, I want to cut it away from you. And he cuts and he cuts. And in there, after he cuts away, he can get you. He can get you to worship. He can get you to release yourself in him. He can get you to the place where he can speak to you, where he can commune with you. Now people are saying, ah, wow, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. But it's a box. I have in my hand, it's a box. And it's beautiful. After a while, people say, okay, that's a box and put it one side. Jesus said, no, there is more that you can accomplish. Don't think that you have reached because you get compliments or whatever. There is more that is within you. I want to dig deeper and I want to pull out that gifts. I want to anoint that gift. I want to anoint you so that others will be blessed so that others will come to see my glory my glory in you so i want to pull off the cover no no you said to yourself no i want to pull off the cover and it reaches deep within you when you immerse yourself in prayer in fasting in reading of the word it, he reaches within you and pull out that diamond, that treasure, that anointing that it takes and cover you with, with, cover you with that anointing. And people begin, to, people begin to be blessed. The anointing of God begin to reach people and they are, they, they are healed. They are blessed. And he doesn't want you to put it, put it back, but he wants you to wear it. Now people are asking you the time. No, no you, can, you, can, you can minister to others. Others are looking to you for your ministry. You, you are able to freely allow the Holy Spirit to take that that he has placed within you and begin to bless the world. That happens when you allow him to mold you and to make you and to purify you and you yield yourself to him. Let me encourage you that uh, just being there is not enough. Just being a Christian is not enough. Just saying, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Oh, I'm not stealing, I'm not doing that. I'm keeping your commandments. That is not enough. There is more within you covered up in all sorts of stuff. Allow the Holy Spirit to tear it away and let him pry open that gift so that the giver can be happy. Not only the giver, but those around can say, ah, oh my God. My God is good, and they are blessed by your gift, by your talent, by the treasure that God has placed within you. May God bless you. It's a beautiful Sunday, and today we're going to unite and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and to bless your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we are going to, we are going to pray at this time. I'm going to invite Mother Blake to just come at this time and start out with a word of prayer. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This morning as we come to worship King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we just want to thank him most of all for allowing us to be a part of this day. Thank him for the privilege of being alive. Thank him for allowing us to breathe one more time. God, we just want to thank you. I'm just going to sing a little chorus this morning. We're praising our God. The songwriter said, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransom, heal, restore, forgiven. Who like this praise shall sing. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the everlasting King. Praise Him for His grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise Him still the same as ever, slow to chide and swift to This morning, dear God. Oh, we praise you, oh God. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, like he tends and spares us. Well, our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently hears us. Rescue. Oh, Father God, this morning as we come before you, we just come to praise you for who you are this morning. You are the God of grace this morning. We want to praise you, oh God, for the privilege of being alive today. God, what a precious Jesus you are. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for your loving kindness towards us. My God, you say do not judge us after our sins, my God. You are so merciful to us, oh God. We just want to thank you this morning. Because without you, dear God, we wouldn't have any life in us. Thank you this morning. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify, magnify. We exalt you. We lift you up this morning. You said in your word, if you be lifted up, then you will draw all men unto you. So this morning, God, as we lift you up this morning in praise and worship, I pray that some heart will be touched this morning. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. You. Oh, your word said the heavens declare the glory of God and the permanent charities and the works of God this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. You have a witness, even my God, in the world today. Because, Father, the world 
church here and the work. When we look at the beautiful flowers, the trees, oh God, the water, my God, running out of the rock. God, we praise you this morning. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. We praise you for the air we breathe this morning. We praise you this morning to allow us, my God, this morning to wake up in our right mind with the activities of our land. We praise you this morning that we can come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. We praise you praise for the you church God. this morning, oh God. Yes, God. Oh, Father Jesus, we praise you. You are awesome this morning. You are an awesome God. This morning, I praise you this morning for loving us unconditionally this morning, oh God. Father, as we celebrate our woman's son this morning, I just want to thank you for liberating us because God, my Jesus, it's like we were nothing in years gone by wrong. Even now, we are still struggling to be recognized. But God, this morning, you said, oh, the sun set free is free indeed. And because of your grace and your mercy this morning, we are free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are free this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus. So we just want to praise you for freedom. Freedom this morning. We just want to praise you. We praise you for the songs of Zion. We praise you for teaching us how to pray. We praise you this morning, oh God, for teaching us how to lift our hands in worship. We praise you this morning, dear God, praise for you, every blessing, every healing, my God, every provision, every guidance, every protection. God, we praise you this morning. You, Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. We just want to praise you. We, have lips in, we don't have lips enough to praise you for all of your goodness and your mercy to us. So God, this morning, we just commit ourselves into you. And we ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to be in our midst. Because it's not by might nor by, but it's by your spirit. So God, we are asking you to allow your spirit to take over this service even now. As we turn it over to you. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank Glory you. to God. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you, Jesus. Jesus. We lift your name up praise this morning, you, God, and we tell you, you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, this is the day that you have made, and Thank we you. are rejoicing. Will is future. We are rejoicing, and we are glad in you this morning, Lord, that you have made us, and you have made us for yourself. We are excited this morning, Lord, that we were buried alive. Oh, God, but we are still breathing this morning, and it must be for a reason. And we know the reason, Lord, is that your work through us is not yet fulfilled. We ask you this morning, oh, God, that you will bless our service. Oh, God, we are in kingdom dominion church of God. Oh, God, we thank you this morning for our social media, for those who are on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Zoom this morning, Lord. We are a church without walls. We ask you this morning, oh, God, that each heart will be in tune with you. Oh, God Almighty, we ask this morning that we will not be running up and down in the church this morning. Wherever we are, oh, God, we will spend the time to spend it with you and you only. Oh, God, we pray this morning that we will put the dogs to sit down. We'll put the children to sit down. Oh, God, we will not be distracted, oh, God, by any other thing but to concentrate on you this morning, Lord. We repeat, oh God, this is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing in the few minutes and the few hours, oh God, that we'll give to you and you only. We ask that you bless our service this morning. Oh, hallelujah. We ask this morning, oh God, that you will bless the speaker. We ask that you bless women around the world. Hallelujah. We ask this morning, oh God, that you'll bless the musicians. We ask this morning, oh God, that you'll bless the praise team. There are those who are at work this morning, Lord, but they're still with us. We ask you this morning, oh God, that you'll touch the moderator. That everything that will be done and so far has been done is only for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Praise, praise God, praise God. We praise him this morning. We praise him this morning. We praise him this morning. We praise him. Oh, the glory of his presence. We, your people, give you reverence. So arise to your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace. This morning we come to give honor and glory to the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just want to stand here at the throne room, giving you thanks and praise for somebody who wants to praise you, but their circumstances beyond their control, why they cannot praise you this morning. And so we're standing in the gap for somebody. Lord, I pray this morning that you will allow your spirit, oh God, to hoover over us. As we gather in this studio on this morning, Lord, your presence will go before us and do that which need to be done. God, there is a remnant that you have called, that you have chosen, that you have separated. And we have come together, Lord, for the lifting up of your name. Won't you come by here this morning, Lord, and let the glory of the Lord be risen among us. Father, we pray that you will breathe upon your people. Touch somebody, Lord, that need a healing touch this morning. Oh, God, somebody who is weighted by their problems. Oh, God, somebody who is depressed because they cannot find any way out. My God, I pray that you will show up and that you will be a light in their darkness. Give peace to every family, men, women, and children will recognize that Jesus is alive and well, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We continue our service in worship and in honor to our Savior and our King. And we'll continue with our morning's lesson. And this will be done by Sister Tanil Francis. This morning's lesson will be taken from Luke 8, verse 43 to 48. Here beginneth. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. And immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touch me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Here ended the reading of the Lord. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Praise God, praise God. Our worship belongs to our Father. Our worship belongs to our Savior and our King. And this morning, regardless of the tackles and plans of the enemy, we are here to worship God. We are here to honor him. And for that reason, we come in different forms of worship, whether it be offering, whether it be with our songs or prayer. And right now to honor our Father, our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords, our praise team will come to continue our worship because he's worthy. If he's worthy, let us, wor let us praise him one time. He's worthy, let us give him praise another time. He's worthy, let us honor him. Praise hallelujah, praise hallelujah. Praise God. I love you, Lord. 
And I leave my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, hear what you Somebody lift your hands and worship just right where you are. Just, just lift your hands and bless God. Hallelujah. 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 All right, I'm going to take you into Zamar. Yes. Yes. I'm going to take you into Zamar. Hallelujah. Come on. Bless the Lord and the instrument. Bless the Lord and the instrument. Come on, bless the Lord and the instrument. Come on, bless the Lord and the instrument. Come on, bless the Lord and the instrument. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord and the instrument. Let the instrument praise God up in here. Hallelujah. I know let the people of God shabbat God. Come on, lift your hands and shabbat God. Come on, lift your hands and shout out the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah! How we bless God. How we bless the name of Jesus. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and are safe. Come on, bless the, the Lord and the instrument. I'm still working with Zamar. I'm still lifting up the instrument to praise God. I'm still lifting up God and the instrument. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. On my way to church this morning, you know when you're the driver, there's a lot of things that you miss while you're driving, right? Because you have to stay focused on the road. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And on my way to church this morning, I looked to my left and I saw a church, people of God out there in Radio Land. And there were more graves at the church than there were folks to worship God. And it got my attention. It got my attention. I said there was more grave at the church than there were people to worship. But hear me, wherever you are listening to us from this morning, hear me and hear me good. The Bible said that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn from their wicked ways now this is three instructions in one can I point them out to you all over again this is worship time but the Bible said that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray Amen. and seek my face and turn from Amen. their wicked ways then I the Lord I said I the Lord will hear from heaven and I will heal their land and I will forgive their sins I'm going to say something here. 
And this is not the general belief of everybody who is in the studio. This is mine. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I believe that the church, whoever you are as a church, you are responsible for the pandemic that is going on. Because if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, just say, he will heal the land. Yes. Come on, bring up your worship up in here. Lift your worship up in here. Come on, somebody lift your worship. Oh, let us some more, God. Come on, lift your worship. Come on, lift your worship. Come on, lift your worship. The church need to pray. The red man need to pray and seek the face of God and turn from their wicked ways. Something is wrong with the picture right now. But I said that was my concern. Uh, that views is not shared by everybody in here. But I take that on uh, because of the word that we read this morning. If my people who are called by my name, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. Come on, let, give God a praise. Mm. Oh, Holy Ghost. I'm not going to run in front of you this morning, Jesus. I will wait. I will wait. Oh, yes. Lift the worship with the music. Come on. Bless the name. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I feel Jesus already in here. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Praise God. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. Say it again, yeah, yeah. As the deer hunted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, Lord.
as I long, as I long, as I long to worship you. Clap your hands and praise God. Clap your hands and praise God. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He's going to open our eyes right now. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Come on, everybody, everywhere. I want to see. Of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let the 
glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. the name of Jesus. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We have one final song this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. We bow down and worship Yahweh. right there where you are right where you are can you just say a word of prayer father we glorify you uh-huh we exalt you we exalt you Lord. because there's no one else like you none that can be compared to you and so god as we come oh, into the Jesus. sanctuary to give off that our best to you this Jesus. morning. We ask Heavenly Father, Lord, that you will show up. We ask Heavenly Father, Lord, that you will ride in. We ask Heavenly Father, Lord, that you will anoint. We ask Heavenly Father, Lord, that you will favor us at this time. Give us a heart like thine. Purify us, God. Purify our hearts. Purify our minds. Purify the things we do, our action, the things we say. We ask, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you will pour into us even now, God, as we pour out to you, as we worship you, as we recognize you as Yahweh. This morning, God, do a visitation this yes, morning. Lord, yes, Let yes. your will be done this morning in the sanctuary. God, we give it all to you this morning. We surrender all to you this morning. And so, God, have your way. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jehovah is your, your name. name. Jehovah God. Jehovah is your, your name.
ready to fight. You are ready to fight. Mighty warrior. 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 God we serve. Yahweh. Our tribute to him is our giving, is our sacrifice of praise. And at this time, as we choose to continue in worship, we are going to worship in giving. This morning, we know of many scriptures that we can bring, of examples in the Bible about giving, about the importance of us as children of God giving to him. Hallelujah. But I'm going to use this morning in the same breath, our father, what he has done already, what he has promised to do in the future and is still doing. I want us to bring in remembrance this morning. In Psalm 63, it said, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. We can testify in our lives how many times God has saved us from accidents. How many times we have prayed and he answered. Yes. How many times he delivered us out of situation, out of the plans of the enemy. We can testify. We can testify that by faith, we look forward to a healthier tomorrow. We look forward to the promises of God with him. We look forward to the fact that whatever the words and whatever we put our hands to, we will prosper. If we walk according to the will of God, we will prosper. So let us even this morning, as we think about giving, as we prepare ourselves to give, let us give knowing that the things that we do for Christ, he promised that he will not go to a, uh, in a veil. Whatever we sacrifice to, to God, he is gonna, he's gonna bless us. So I'm gonna ask us to remember as we give, we are giving out of our gratitude, out of our love for him, out of our trust in his word, in his authentic word, in his true word, in the word that we can depend on, in the word that we can look forward into tomorrow, knowing that we are victorious, knowing that when we call on God, he's going to answer. So if the rent is to be paid, we can trust that he's going to, if he promised, he's going to do it. Yes. If other bills are to be paid, if our, sis, if, our, if our children are sick 
are in danger or not walking in the path that they ought to be walking. His promise is there that as we call on him, he's going to answer. So this morning, I'm going to ask us to give our best gift because God deserves our best. There are different ways that we can give. And as the Kingdom Dominion Church of God, we greatly appreciate your generous donation and sacrifice. Your support helps us to further our mission to spread the gospel, not only locally, but globally. You can make your donations using one of the following methods. Online, www.kdcog.com. You can also do it through Zelle, kingdomdominion.info at kdcog.com or via Cash App, which is dollar sign, Pastor Cliff, FTDM, or we can do it the old way as usual with the mail donation here of Kingdom Dominion Church of God, 96 Pleasant Hill Road, Conyers, Georgia, 30012. 30012. And remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So let us be cheerful in our giving as we give to God. Praise God.
stand against him if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what can stand against see earlier today Pastor Campbell was talking about how we are given gifts and that when we unravel them uh, take away the ne negativity and start looking at the positives we're able to touch other people's hearts we're able to bless them we're able to minister to them so, so, so when those negative thoughts come along and just say, you know, if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? I mean, if, if God is the greatest, greatest God on earth, if you believe that God is the greatest, can you just say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Do you understand that there is no way that something could come against you once Jesus says yes? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Stand against. Can stand against. Again. Stand against. Our God is greater. Our God is strong. God is stronger. At this time, the special song is already done, and I thank Sister for that wonderful song, reminding us that our God is greater. Brothers and sisters, it's time for the word. We have been filled and we continue with our filling. The supper that God has prepared for us this day. And today, we have no other that is more able to deliver that direct word from God than Pastor Lloyd Francis. We appreciate his work and I know God has something special for for us today Amen. let us pray as the word comes father we thank you jesus but even in this time lord you have prepared a word for your children you have prepared a word for each listener and lord i just thank you for the anointing that you have, you have placed on our our speaker pastor lloyd francis i thank you holy spirit that you have already begun a work in preparation for us today, Jesus. And we're releasing him to you, Father, as he enabled himself and has prepared. I thank you that you're using him as a vessel for us this morning. And we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Francis. Amen. Praise God. I'm indeed happy to be here to share the word of God with you. I know some of you who have seen my former broadcast have looked forward to seeing me in a garden, but I'm sorry, outside is extremely hot and <laughs> I'd rather be in the AC for now. But indeed, it's good to be here to share with you the word of God, for indeed God is good and God is worthy to receive glory, honor, power, and praise. I want to thank those who came before uh, the lovely singing for the moderator who introduced me, for you know, Pastor Campbell who you know, gave such a, a powerful introduction. Indeed, I am just happy to be a part of the fellowship here. You know, God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Uh, Sister Taniel read uh, the scripture which was from Luke 8, verse 43 to 48. And I will not 
dare bore you by going over that scripture. But I would like to talk to you today because, you know, the Lord laid on my heart greatly this scripture. And it came to me very strongly last night. You know, God, 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 God is something else. He is something else. He laid it on my heart and he woke me up out and said, hey, listen, you need to share this. <laughs> when we look at the scripture, Luke 8, 43 to 48, I know many times it have been preached already. People speak about the woman having the issue of blood and that she pressed through the crowd. And when she did, she finally reached up to Jesus and said, if only I could touch but the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be made whole. And so we rejoice in knowing that all she had to do was just touch the hem of his garment. But prior to all of that, Jesus was busy in the very first portion of the scripture. It wasn't just an ordinary stroll that he was making. If you notice, he says that he was hard pressed by the crowd. And so where did the crowd come from? The Bible tells us in verses before, you know, chapter, uh, uh, the first, the first uh, scripture, is that he went from villages to villages and he was preaching. And as he began to preach, people began to come out and want to hear him and to be acquainted with what he was teaching. And while Jesus was there talking and sharing, he went across the river on the other side. And when he went across, he shared again and delivered the man who was sick with demons who had caused him to be in the tomb, cutting himself. I want you to understand what is happening here. Before he even went over there and was on the boat, a storm arose and he said to the disciples, hey, why are you so faithless? Why are you so worried? And he rebuked the wind and the wave and they said, wow, how could he do that? Scripture tells us that he went across and he healed the man that had demons in him. And when he had done that, they're telling, don't go and share this to anyone, just keep it quiet. But he couldn't help himself. He went and he started sharing. And he, soon after, the people came and said, you have to leave the course. You have to leave the land. He went back on the boat and traveled back. And when he traveled back, there it was that the crowd was there waiting on him to hear more from the Lord. When he went over, there Jairus met him and said, hey, come here. There's a situation that I wanted to address. My daughter, who is 12 years old, is ill and she requires your attention. I can just imagine how the father felt. The anxiety, longing to have that child be healed. I can imagine how he felt when Jesus turned and said to him, yes, sure, show me the way. The excitement, the, the enthusiasm, yes, finally. I know that she's going to be healed. I was excited. And as Jesus traveled with her, with him, he must have been frustrated to see all those different people walking in front of him, holding him back. He probably be one of those who was saying, come on, man, excuse, excuse, excuse. You just have somewhere to go. You have somewhere to be. This is important. What he has to do is very important. My daughter is dying. It's a matter of life and death. And she need to, he needs to be there to heal her. Can just imagine the fever of the crowd. Those who heard it were anxious to watch and see and say, ah, let me see what happened here. I have to see if Jesus is going to heal her. Everybody was touching him and pressing him and excitement was there. 
Yeah, but there was this lady. I call her the sideline woman. It's my little nickname for her, the sideline. No mention of her in the scriptures before. No mention of her, none at all. She was there. She had a situation that was grievous too. She had a bad situation that required her attention. And, you know, some of you might be on the sideline and you look and you see others going through and getting through and you listen to their testimony and you listen to what they have to face and you're saying to yourself, man, there is no way that I can compete with them. She probably was there when Jesus first going around and talking to the villages. She probably came out of one of those villages. She waited. She probably was there when Jesus spoke and gave the parable and talked about the good seed and the bad seed and the good ground and bad ground. She heard it all. And she waited. Probably was there too. When the Bible was so keen to mention Mary, who Jesus threw seven demons out of, and different people who were women who were there gathered around and they were ministering unto him. And she probably wanted to minister unto him too, but she had lost everything. The Bible said she had spent all her money on physicians. And had no help. So she could not even go there and began to minister to, you know, get acquainted with Jesus. To see if Jesus would give her a little attention. Because she had a problem, an issue that needed his attention. And she probably was there and she waited. The sideline Christian sitting down patiently waiting for a change to occur and nothing happening. She probably went by the water waited patiently for Jesus to come back. Probably said to herself, probably, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Probably Jesus might not even come back. Probably has other important things to do. And when she looked in the horizon, she see him coming. She said, oh, all right, okay, 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 okay. This is my chance. She probably mustered up the courage to say, okay, let me see if I can say something to him. Just as he come over, but only to have her thoughts or conversation be broken by Jairus, who declared himself to be leader in the synagogue. <laughs> How can you compete against a leader when you're just a little nobody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she waited. Yet again, she listened. And he says, I have a situation here. I need you to come right now to my house because my daughter is ill. And she waited because, yes, this is important. He says, my daughter is 12 years old and she's dying. She's just a kid. She's just a child. And she waited yet another time. She probably wanted to say something, but could not because they're going to look and say, but you're a big, big woman. You lived your life. The child is there waiting. The child needs Jesus' attention now. And if you don't give her the attention, she will die. And don't you understand who is asking for his assistance? The leader in the synagogue. It's important for him. Because of his position, he get to his house and heal his daughter. She probably waited. I'm, I'm, the Lord is speaking to those sideline Christians who have been waiting for a long time for God to come to your attention. Have been waiting for a long time for God to heal you. And you have not heard your prayers been answered. You have not seen any attention been given. I've been waiting a long time, and you said, if, if only I could just get five minutes, not much, just five minutes. 
but she dare not interrupt it because she saw the anxiety of the man who wanted his child to be here. She saw the enthusiasm and the crowd anticipating to see something happen here. How dare she intervene? Wait. You heard many messages like that too. You heard many messages telling you to wait. Wait on the Lord. To sit down and wait on the Lord. I'm speaking to those Christians who can't wait no longer. You have said enough is enough. I need my attention now. I need a touch now. I don't need to have a big prayer meeting at my house. I don't need to have a crowd come to my house. I don't need to have pastor come here. I just want somebody to pray to help me because I'm dying here. Luke did not mention how grievous her situation is, but St. Mark mentioned it. He said she had spent all she had and she was suffering and her condition was getting worse. She had been good all along. She had done her due diligence. She had gone where she was supposed to go and get healing. She had waited patiently, but her situation was dire and she was dying and nobody had any mind of pain or any attention. She wasn't like the man who had friends who could tear open the roof and put her before Jesus and said, here she is, she need attention. She didn't have someone who was there. Or oh, Jesus was walking by her path, by the pool, that she could say, Jesus, I'm here. And he could say, be healed. Jesus wasn't even going her direction. <laughs> there are Christians who feel that Jesus is no longer coming your direction, that he's no longer passing your path, that your season have passed, that your moment have passed, that your opportunity have passed. This word is a word for you that even though she felt that way, she said, if only I could just but touch. While he is busy visiting others, while he is busy ministering to others, I don't want him to break his attention. I don't want to disturb the service. I don't want anybody to come. I just want a touch. That's all I want, a touch. I'm good. I'm good. I have other problems. I've lost all my money. I'm poor, but I'm good. I just want a touch. I'm not asking for wealth nor fame. I'm not asking for your attention. I just want a touch. That's all I want. Just a touch. I want you to steal a little blessing while you're passing by. That's all. Sideline. Sideline. She was there and she waited. Baba said that she pressed through the crowd and she reached out and she said, if only I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. And she touched his hem. I don't know, I'm not a woman. This is Lady Sunday. And I, I'm thankful that they allowed me to minister. I'm not a woman and so I don't have or I know what an issue is. I don't know what a period is. I've heard many women spoken and said that when they're having their period, it's an uncomfortable time. I've, I've heard that when the period is coming, that sometimes it makes them agitated and uncomfortable. And some have even said that it has caused their body odor to be elevated. What I do know is that I know someone personally who was having an issue of blood situation and she was suffering and 
she, she, she called me, she said to me, hey, listen, I'm in a situation, I have insurance, but the insurance only pay for X amount. I, 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 need, I need more money to cover. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't help. I, I have my bills to pay. I have my, you know, my car payment to make. You know, I have life, I'm sorry. Yeah. And she says, okay, I appreciate that, Reverend Francis. Okay, I understand. And, 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 and didn't hear from her. She, she called back again, she says, listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lying. I, I know you might be having something, but I'm asking for a little help here. And she showed me the doctor's report. She emailed me the doctor's report. And she says, hey, listen, this is the situation here. The, the, uh, I've been suffering. I've been silent for a long while. And I've been suffering. And I have become anemic. And many times, I would love to go out and do little things. But I can't because I'm, I'm so weak. I'm, I'm, I'm passing out. I feel like I can't live normally. I said to her, well, you know, go to her next doctor, you know, see what they can do. And she went, she checked, and they said that she has a fibroid inside and it needs to be removed. I said, okay, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I just can't help. She called me again. She said to me, she got some medication and the medication is supposed to shrink the fibroid and then she'll be all right. I said, all right, great, awesome. Glad to know, God is good. She got the medication and Tried it, but no help. The hope, the hope of, yes, seeing a physician and something would happen and nothing happened. She called me again. She says, uh, listen, the other day I passed out. The bleeding is more now. I've called my friends. I've called everybody, but nobody can help me. The insurance company says, yes, they will pay a certain amount, but I need some US dollars, I need some help here. And if I don't get the help, I don't think I'm gonna make it. I said, well, all right then, um, let me see what I can do. And I sent half of the money. And I said, well, somebody else will have to help with that half, I'm sorry. Call me again, she says, listen, nobody else can help me. And the doctor said, if I don't come with, this, come with the money by tomorrow, they're not gonna do the surgery. I don't know. I don't know how long I can live like this. I had to make the sacrifice and send the other portion. She went and did the surgery. I'm saying this for you to understand that here is this woman that her issue of blood had gotten worse over the years. Twelve years she was battling it. Twelve years she was going on with it. Now it has gotten worse, and her only hope rests now in just touching the hem of his garment. She went ahead and touched it. When she touched it, she felt something move within her. Jesus turned around and said, somebody touch me. Disciples were confused. They were like, uh, don't you see the crowd touching you, Jesus? Don't you see how many people touching you? I mean, Seriously? Touching you? He says, yes, somebody touch me. The man, Jairus, must have felt annoyed again. Why don't he come? Why is it that he's now stopping to address the issue? Okay, somebody touch you. Fine, no problem. Listen, my child is dying. Jesus stopped and said, I have to address this. The woman, feeling ashamed and embarrassed, stepped forward and said, I touch you. And she explained, she says, I, I didn't mean to offend you, but I had a problem here. Let me tell you something. Jesus looked on her and he said to her something that he had been saying from the very start of the very first verse. He has been talking about it. Faith. When the disciples were doubting, when the wind and the waves were there, he says, Oh, thou of little faith. He looked at her and he said to her, Thy faith have made thee whole. 
I speak to those of you who are suffering. I speak to those of you who are going through situations. You feel that you wish that you'll have pastor to come and pray for you. You wish that you'll have somebody that will come there and just share a word. You wish that somebody would just lay hands on you. You wish that something will change. Let me tell you something. Stop wishing and just have faith. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to rely on myself or Pastor Campbell or anybody else for that matter of fact to show up to hear your condition because many times we feel like if we could just talk to somebody and share with them our condition, they will have mercy and pray. The Lord is saying he hears your prayer in your secret closet. He hears your prayer even though you are hidden and you're embarrassed and you're ashamed and you don't want much attention. The Lord is saying to you today, just have The song I just said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord thy healer. I sent my word and I heal your disease. I am the Lord your healer. Doesn't matter how you think that you are insignificant, the Lord will stop the crowd. You will silence it. It doesn't matter how somebody else might be praying and speaking in tongues and demand God's attention. He will stop to give you attention. All he wants is that touch of faith. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the situations are, I want to encourage you here today. Trust God. Have faith in God. Believe God. And God will make a way. This woman got her healing. Her faith wasn't a mountain. <laughs> her faith wasn't drastic. She was a miss nobody. Jesus didn't even touch her. And she touched Jesus. She was made whole. God, Richard, bless you. As we give you thanks, Lord. I want to pray for somebody real quick, and then I'll hand over to Pastor Campbell to do the altar call. But I want to pray for somebody real right now who's going through a lot of issues, and they're saying, Pastor, uh, it, it's tough. It's really tough. God wants you to know that he hears you. As a woman, he hears you. You're a man, he hears you. You don't have to worry. The Lord hears you. Heavenly Father, right now, I give you thanks and praise. I thank you, God, because you are worthy to receive glory, honor, power, and praise. Holy Spirit, right now, I pray for those who are going through situations that are so overwhelming, so difficult, so Oof, there's too much to bear. I pray, Daddy Jesus, that you will minister to them now. That your healing power will begin to touch them. That, God, you will make a way there where there seems to be no other way. Touch them now. Heal your people now. The sideline Christians, those who are not famous, those who are not on the broadcast, those who remain silent during the broadcast. Touch your people now as we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Shackled by an heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame me yes he did and now I'm no longer the 
Jesus name verse 2 says since I met the blessed Savior and since he cleansed and made Mike to Brother Winlock. Stand up, bro. Sing with me. <laughs> you touch me. Come on, my brother. You can do it. Since I met the blessed Savior, since He has made me whole. Walk it out, brother. Walk it out. Come, come, come on. Come on. I will never cease to praise Him. Shout it till it turns to roll. I shout until it turns to He touched me. He touched me. Ah, 
All of you come, all three of you. All of you come. Just just join me. Oh God Almighty. people business alone we're just gonna extend the prayer to the family is that all right with you amen 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 okay 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 he touched me I speak to my brother who is the head of this household. The Spirit of God is getting ready to reinstate you. Hallelujah. To your rightful place in the kingdom of God. Even now, Lord, in his heart and with the utterance from the lyrics that have been written by somebody else, he said, I will never cease to praise you. And I'll shout it while eternity rolls. God, there is a position and there is a place in the kingdom of God for brother Winlock and his family. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I am calling my brother to make a 360 degree and submit and commit himself and his family and every last one of his children to Almighty God. I'm calling you out of that dry place. I am calling you out of stagnancy. I am calling you out of doubt and fear. And I am releasing you in the kingdom of Almighty God. You have not gone too far 
where the presence of God can't reach you. You have not done too much that God can't forgive you. And I'm speaking to you as the head of the household. So that the Abrahamic covenant will be extended to every member of your family standing here on today. God, in the name of Jesus, let this day, this day, mark a different day in the life of this family. Something has shifted. Something has changed. Holy Ghost, take over. Holy Ghost, take over. Holy Ghost, do a take over now. Of man, woman, and children. Hallelujah. As you break them, Lord, and melt them and mold them according as you want them. Lord, this is a new day in the life of this family. This is a new day in the life of this family. And we declare it. And we decree it now. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Ghost. 